Hello guys, um, today we're going to have a look at uh, how to, uh, well firstly create a uh, the default Angular 8 website uh, using uh, Angular CLI. Uh, once we've got that we're then going to install Angular Universal into that project and uh, ultimately we're going to deploy the project onto a Linux server. Um, the, the, the specific case we're going to be using is Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Um, but uh, and we're also then going to be obviously installing Apache itself um, so that we can get to that uh, website um, but obviously you know I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 here but uh, CentOS being slightly different in how it uh, works with Apache and so the, the folders and so forth the names are different but the process is the exact same so ultimately you know the CentOS the Red Hat guys you know if you're running Fedora or whatever you would be able to follow this video if you already know the basics of Apache. But for someone that's absolutely new, um, yeah, I demonstrate how to do it with Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create ourselves an Angular website uh, or a project. So uh, I'm in a folder projects library. And uh, okay, so let's create a new uh, um, project. Uh, what did I decide to call this? Uh, test site so engine new test site and uh, it'll go ahead it'll ask us a few basic questions here and uh, okay would you like to do angular routing I normally say yes and then I like SCSS but whichever it doesn't matter you choose and okay that'll go ahead and generate the project for us while that's busy um, we'll move over to the server um, I'm running in a virtual machine here um, but I have done this on a live server uh, doing the steps that I'm going to be showing you now. Now, okay, so, all right, so we present with a login and we log in and uh, it should be completely updated. Uh, yes, there are no updates, so it's the absolute latest Ubuntu 18.04.3 LTS. And um, all right, so there, there's literally nothing on this machine. I, I've done nothing ex except do the, the install. There's nothing extra on here, no snaps, no, there's nothing I selected in the installation itself. So this is a dead standard install. All right, um, one thing you can notice is the IP address over here it shows is 192.168.0.1.1.0. Um, I'm going to be not working on the server itself here. I'm going to be SSHing into that server. Um, so in others, if, if so, we have our server on the left here, and then yeah, I can SSH into it. So we could assume that server is, you know, somewhere far away in Hong Kong or or in Sweden or, or wherever the case may be. But you've got SSS access to the server. You need pseudo access. But all right, so that server is running. So let's minimize that and uh, let's get to my command line here. So this will be the first time I connect to this machine. Uh, 168.0.110. Um, use it with the user Dean. It'll ask me because it's the first time I can ask you. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. All right, and he's going to ask me for my Dean password on the server. All right, and and there I am now on the server. Okay, so if I if I go to the server for instance, I can prove. Oops, I can prove that to you. So uh, there should be two connections at the moment, which they are TTY1 and PTS0. And uh, the first one is the, the logged in version of the server that we're looking at now. And then obviously it says uh, 192.168.0.106 is from, and that is a, a bash connection. And uh, that, that's what I'm running in, in the window over here, in the terminal over here. All right, so w w the first thing that you'll want to do is to install Apache, okay? So um, we say sudo apt install Apache 2. All right, and uh, ask me for the password, and of course we'll say yes. Are you sure? You can just press enter, but say, well, if you are sure, and you can have a look at all that, and you say yes. Okay, it'll go ahead and do that install for us. Um, it's a fairly quick install, it doesn't take too long. But okay, while that's running, let's look here. All right, so the, 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 the project was created for us in Angular. It did find two little issues here, but uh, okay, we, we're not here to, to fix Angular, all right? We, we purely here to, just to create a basic website. So, so if I do a listing in that folder now, it says created us a, a subdirectory there of test site. So uh, that's where our project lies. So we'll need to change into that folder. And uh, if we do a listing on that now, so that, that's everything that it created for us, okay? Now, one of the first things you do is to um, install Angular Universal. All right, and uh, in order to install Angular Universal, I've got it here. 
All right, um, just copy that line there and uh, copy that. All right, and uh, we say paste here. Okay, and then uh, let me just make this window slightly bigger so it doesn't wrap so much. Okay, and uh, so it's the ng add uh, ng universals express engine. Um, that express engine is going to give us some problems at some point. Not in this video, but I'll explain to you something about PHP just now with that. Um, it works, all right, but there is a little issue on PHP, which maybe I haven't looked too much to so solve the problem. Or um, well, I shouldn't say it's a problem. Maybe it's just me not knowing how to do it. But I haven't really looked into it that much, and maybe it's something you guys can do and, and maybe report back on. But all right, so the client project is the name of our project, which was test site. Oops, uh, test site. It's very important to get the name right. Okay, and it'll go ahead and install uh, Universal for us into our Angular project. And uh, okay, it's going ahead with that. And uh, okay, the next step would be is for us to do to build it. All right, but we'll wait for it obviously to uh, complete the installation. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so Apache is installed. All right, so um, well, in effect, uh, we should if we do a curl uh, to our local machine. Uh, HTTP colon webpack uh, local host we should be presented with there's our default Apache page so it's up and running all right um, I mean if you want to make sure about that um, we could go to what was this IP address again I think it was uh, 110 if I remember correctly but okay so let's just go to the browser and HTTP uh, oops HTTP colon webpack um, 192.168.0.110 all right so i'm going from my own machine now to the server where i just installed apache why am i spelling so poorly here all right and uh, there we go we presented with the default apache page so we can connect from our local machine uh, to the server running in the virtual machine or in tokyo or hong kong or hawaii or wherever the case may be all right so um okay so apache itself is installed um, then what we can go and do is I want to create a folder where I'm actually going to put my project on the server. Maybe I'm jumping a little bit too much here. Let me, let me finish the Angular side of things and then we'll move over because maybe it's a little bit too much to keep track on um, in, in, if you're still new to everything. All right, so um, did that install now? Um, I thought I installed it. Um, okay let's see uh, uh yes it's installed all right so what we now need to do is we need to now build it so okay I, i'm going to we can do all this by the command line um but i'm going to use the visual studio uh, code for this so in the project folder itself i've got visual studio code installed so in the project folder itself i just say code dot all right and enter the dot will say open the following the, the current folder in visual studio code all right, and Visual Studio Code will open up for us. It takes a little moment. Um, okay, there's Visual Studio Code opening. And uh, okay, there we have it. All right, and uh, just bring up the command line here. Okay, so you'll notice that if, if you look up top here, um, you've got uh, source, node modules, E2E, and so forth. When, once we do a build, there'll be a new folder there called dist okay for distribution the contents of that folder is what you're going to be copying over onto the server and then um, serving up through apache um, okay so the first thing we need to do is to build it so okay it's in npm run build ssr all right and uh, we let that build okay and then after that um you, you, you could you oops uh, sorry where am I now okay you could say npm run serve to actually test it out okay but I've noticed ng serve also just works the normal ng service you would normally do it um, well at least as I normally do it okay so so it's building yeah it does take a little while um, but remember this is just the default angular um, template that's that's running um, the, the the website it's just default we're, we're not adding anything to the server I mean we, we I don't know we, we could change the front end or something to say hello world or something but but this is not really an angular development um, video this is more just to say 
you know, once you've got your Angular project up and running, how to install Universal and so forth, how to build it and how to deploy it, and then how to render or uh, uh, run it from, from an Ubuntu server. Okay, generating ES5 bundles. Okay, it takes a little while still. Um, all right, and that's completed. It takes a minute or two, depending on the speed of your machine. Um, this one isn't extremely fast at all. Um, okay, and uh, all right. So, so we've now we've we've plugged in uh, Universal into the system, into the Angular project. We've done a build, and you'll notice up top here now we have a disk folder, and inside there you've got browser, server, and server JS. Um, now that server JS is what ultimately is going to be called um, to actually run the server as a as as a server on its own all right um and you'll be using apache as a reverse proxy to connect to that server okay and uh all right so so let's just to to see that this thing still runs um so let's do uh, npm run ssr all right so the pre-rendered one let's see if that works it should open up our f oh sorry all right it doesn't open up firefox but it does tell us that it's listening on port 4000 uh, and this is what it's going to do on the server just now as well so if we take that and uh, let's go to firefox and we paste that uh, localhost 4000 in and we enter and there's our website all right so it's up and running everything is good okay and uh, all right so if we go back here and uh, we'll just stop that server for now all right but the important thing is is like i'm saying as the 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 the, the, the contents of the dist folder is very important um, okay, something, sorry, something I should have done just now, but we can let it run in the background, is once you've got server. Uh, sorry, um, yeah, server.ts, all right, um, you'll notice here, uh, where, yeah, all right, on line 27, uh, in this particular case, uh, yeah, you can specify the port you want to run on and so forth, but uh, I've had problems with this dist forward slash browser, okay? Uh, just maybe something I'm doing wrong, I don't know. But just take that out and just make it browser and then my problems seem to go away. So, but the problem is now I've got to regenerate it all again. So we'll do MP run build SSR again and it'll go through the whole process of creating browser server and server.js. In other words, everything under the dist folder, it'll, it'll regenerate for us now. And uh, all right, so, uh, okay. So now we're back on the server, okay? and uh, what did I call that uh, test site okay so if we go and have a look at uh, let's say uh, LL all right this is where Apache keeps its um, um, let's say the, the, the folders for the data uh, of, of the website that it's going to serve okay um, I, I know you should set up the correct you know WW data and so forth the correct users and so forth for all this um, I'm not looking at that at, at this point in time I'm just going to get the website up and running you can worry about the security of it and so forth you know that's from a separate video for instance all right so um, okay we can do that oops uh, we can do all that so let's say um, sudo make dir uh, www and it was test site if I remember correctly all right and uh, all right so we should have it should exist but there should be nothing in it uh, all right so yes it exists there's nothing in it okay so that's where we're going to put our data okay so in other words that which we just generated through angular in the dist folder we need to copy it into test site okay so um Okay, let's see. Uh, maybe it's already finished generating. It's, oh, there we go. It's just finished now. Okay, so what we can do is uh, let's just steal this path here, projects library test site. Okay, and we say copy that. All right, and uh, we'll go back to uh, our SSH connection to the server, and we're going to copy over those files using SSH. So we're going to say SCP, okay, uh, to do a, a SSH copy. All right, SCP. Um, we're going to do it recursively we're going to copy from okay and that is our path based okay and it's uh, i think this is it's dist here yeah. okay all files in there and we're going to copy it through to uh this uh folder we just created uh var www test site all right so if i copy that but remember that's on the server so i've got to tell it um the username and the ip address and so forth to connect to that server one six eight dot 
zero dot I think it was one one oh all right and uh, we paste that pass in and uh, that's fine like that I hope that folder exists as is let's see all right should ask us for a password and everything yes okay and uh, all right it should copy it over for us oh no says follow directory okay so this uh, test site disk is obviously the wrong path so what is it um, let's just uh, quickly open this up open containing folder all right so if we go into disk yeah uh, okay I think I know what it is let's just take that out okay so I just still I'm just trying to find the correct path that's that's all I'm doing at the moment uh, nothing extra fancy here um, I would have thought that would work but clearly not okay so uh, let's just paste that correct path in and uh, no such oh do you know what is this freaking store here why is he saying uh, no such path um, is it our home Oh, but of course, I'm on the server. <laughs> of course, sorry, my mistake. Well, I could do the whole thing in reverse, uh, but okay, sorry, my, 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 my mistake. Um, okay, sorry. All right, so it, it was right all along. All right, so remember, I'm SSHing into, I'm on the server physically here in this view, but I want to go to my local machine, all right, and uh, copy that across. Um, so let's just uh, zoom in here, zoom in, and do one more zoom in. Let's just paste all. Ah, uh, okay. I gotta. Let's just. Uh, let's just copy this whole bit again. Uh, that whole piece there. Actually, I want this one. I think I need that star. Copy. Okay, and we'll paste it over here. All right. So we're doing a copy um over to the server from local from the disk folder and it should say all right i was wondering why it asked me are you sure you want to connect just now so i was connecting back to myself as the first time so it clearly made uh oh i don't have rights hmm that's very interesting okay so what we can do um aha all right so okay just all right this this like i say there's the security things yeah so what i'm going to do is come on i want this minimize or anything okay i don't know what's going on there uh let's just get back here all right so um if we uh just do a uh, cd var www all right ll yeah okay so there's test site so it's owned by root that's what the problem is but i'm logging in as dean okay so this is where you should give it the, the correct user rights you know w data etc or whatever the user is that apache is using um i'm just going to say dean all right so uh we're going to say uh, ch own okay uh, slash uh, dash r all right dean in ubuntu you don't have to say dean twice but we might do that and uh okay and we'll say test site and there we go all right so if we do a recheck okay dean now owns test site okay and if we come back here and we try it again and uh bam it's thrown over all right so if we come look here again and uh, we do a cd test site uh, all our files should now there we go there's there's our files all right and you'll notice normally you have uh, index.html for instance in your root um, but with a universal app we have server.js all right uh, but inside of browser the folder browser i can quickly show you if we just do a ll of browser um, browser you'll notice over here we do have an index html all right so what's actually happening is we are running we, or we're going to be running server.js all right and it's going to serve up what's in browser for us in other words index.html and okay so i mean just to do a quick test of of that all right so you can go and uh, uh where do i run it here now uh deploy npn run build uh, that's not what i wanted 
Uh, where did I put that just now? Um, I guess I could just connect to one of my servers here. All right, let's just quickly do that and I can just find the correct command. All right. And uh, all right, so yeah, we'll have uh, where is that thing now? No, JS, okay, nope. We sorry, I'm wasting your time a little bit here, guys. Um, I've forgotten a little command here. Um, but it's such an obvious one, I can't believe I forgot it. Um, uh, so, uh, let's just see, it's not in my history yet. That's a pity. Okay, so um, let's just get out of here again. It might actually be on my local machine. Um, actually, I know where it is. It's on a different server entirely and that uh, it's in a virtual machine and it's not running at the moment. So, all right, so that's not gonna help us at all. So I need to quickly just do a check here. Um, let me just uh, have a look. Uh, all right, so it was, uh, it was one of these here. Uh, it was actually over here somewhere. Um, let's copy that. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is from another video I was watching. Um, oh, it's as simple as that. Okay, so uh, I thought so, but I wasn't sure. Okay, all right, so 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 we're back uh, on the server now. All right, and if we want to now serve up our website, okay, um, all you need to do is say server. All right. Uh, oh, sorry, um, node server.js, okay? And that'll now start it up and run. Oh, node not found. Uh, oh, I haven't installed uh, node.js yet. Aha, okay. So that's the other thing you need to do. So of course you need to install Apache and the other thing is you need to install node.js. All right, so uh, sudo apt install node.js and uh, it'll ask us are you sure? And yes, we are sure. And we'll go ahead and do that installation for us. Okay, it's also a reasonably quick install. Okay. Hmm. Okay, 30%. We're getting there. Okay. 95% and there we are at 100% and it's done. All right, so uh, if we just uh, rerun node uh, server.js, all right, and it's now telling us it's up and listening on localhost 4000. Okay, so what that actually means is we can actually connect to localhost 4000, all right, and we should get some kind of served result. All right, so um, I'm on my own machine here again. Actually, let's kill this one down. But let let's just cancel this. Um, control uh, C. All right. Let's start it again. But let's run it in the background. All right. So node server is running in the background. All right. And if I now do a curl to the local host, uh, TTP colon quick uh, local host on port four thousand, we should get a response. Okay. This is not through Apache now, remember, this is through the Node Express server that we just started using Node itself with node server.js. Okay, so remember, this is where the reverse proxy comes in. Apache has to connect to this server, okay, in order to put it on the internet, all right? You could expose this directly, but uh, of course, it's not a good idea to stick this on the internet directly. All right, so if you run it, bam, there we've got a whole lot of data back, okay? And in fact, if we go up here, um, you'll notice, okay, this is this is the big thing, all right? You'll note this tag over here, app root, all right? Now, normally, if something is not running pre-rendered through Universal or whatever the case may be, you'll just, if you do a, a, a show, you um, know, if you do a curl or whatever the case may be um, of a website, it'll just show you the, the app root tag and directly after that, the closing tab of app root. 
It's a JavaScript that renders and sticks everything inside there. And that is what we're trying to do. That is, that is the whole idea behind using Angular Universal or any other pre-rendering server that does something similar. Okay, so, so in other words, it's working. Hey, it's great. Um, it'll be great for Google to index and SEO and everything is beautiful. It's going to be fast. Everything is, is excellent. Okay, so all right. So we're still running um, this node server. All right, so let's just cancel that. Okay, so I, like, I'll just cancel this. So if you do a curl now, nothing's running, right? So now what you need to go and do is we need to actually create some configuration files for Apache to connect to this server, all right? Which we'll run later, okay. Um, all right, so, so what we need to do is we need to change to the Apache folders, all right, where Apache stores its stuff, all right? So that is uh, etc. Uh, Apache and uh, sites to uh, uh, available all right all right and uh, okay so those are the sites that it currently has available it is this 00, zero default.conf which is the one that was displayed um, when we went to have a look at it in our browser um, over here okay this is the result of that that configuration file so we can quickly open it all right just to have a look at it um, or just less it okay and uh, triple, okay and, and that's what it looks like all right it's very basic there's not really much in there okay so I I'm just gonna dis disable it uh, so that's one thing we can look at as well how do you disable something uh, a website for instance in Apache all right so well sudo a2 this site okay and then your triple zero all right and it, it's it's now well okay it tells us we need to reload apache so sudo uh, system ctl reload apache 2 okay uh sorry uh, i just typed badly yes yeah, sorry okay you don't need the word service there okay so sudo system control reload apache all right, so, so now that website, even though Apache is still running, that website is no longer available. So if we had to refresh this page here on our browser, okay, uh, oh, why is that still working? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that just uh, defeats the entire object of what I wanted to show you. Um, fail to reload, okay, there's done a reload. Let's just stop Apache just for a moment, just gonna see make sure I'm, I'm pointing to the correct stuff here okay so Apache is no longer running so this page should not work okay so there it's not working it might be that I have to disable both the sites there um, but okay so let's start it up again and let's just see what happens um, okay so if we do a refresh here yeah I think we probably have to disable both those sites uh, this isn't really part of the video but uh, for fun it, let's let's fiddle and now let's just have some fun okay so that's uh, the other one was d oh that's default all right but that's a default it's not enabled so okay i i'm not sure what's what's happening there but okay that's some part of the video so i can get away with it sorry about that guys okay so all right our next step is now we need to create a new configuration file okay um for our website um that we trying to get you over the the the, the, the internet All right so uh, it's uh, let's just do a pseudo nano for instance or vim or whatever you want to use okay and the uh it is um test site um what are we going to call it let's just say test site dot co okay so that's our address test site dot co all right and then you just put conf behind it all right just to say it's a configuration file all right and okay so now we need to go and pay some stuff i've cheated and i've actually copied a whole of this or i've got all of the stuff to copy over but i will go over it with you in a moment um all right so edit and paste that okay so okay so i think what what we can do um is let's okay let, let's disable the reverse proxying for now all right and uh, let's enable document root okay uh, i notice here it's test site.co um i might just need to rename that folder uh but let's see let's not do that let's just see what happens all right so yes so the the, the site itself is called test site.co and the, the way we're going to get to it is with site.testsite.co 
but the actual files are lying where we copied them just now into var www test site all right so if we uh, control s on that and exit all right uh, we still want to have access to it now we have to enable it so it's sudo uh, a2 uh, all right so a2 insight all right and it is uh what is it uh, test test site to so, say yeah test site that's it is okay that conf okay it's telling us again we've got to do a reload um all right and oh okay and it's giving us a problem all right so don't know what it is let's go and see so if we go again to system control but instead of saying start we say status okay and let's see what it tells us all right um could not rely to okay that is a matter notice as far cannot access directory Ah, okay. He still thinks it's in .co, in, in .co. Okay, so I thought that might be the case. All right, so we're going to have to rename that folder just because I want to use the .co in, in the name. Uh, I just want to do that. All right. Um, normally, I would say, for instance, testsite.com or .co.za or .co.uk or whatever the case may be. All right, so uh, let's just get out of that again. So if we go and have a look at um, uh, var www all right you'll notice it's test site okay so what we want to do is change it to test site .co. all right so okay this is where i'm a little bit unsure um so we're going to do a, a move uh, i'm not sure you need to say yeah, yeah yeah okay so all right so it's forward slash var forward slash www the forward slash test site okay and we want to move it to var www oh, come on forward slash test site dot co all right I cannot move permission to not okay so we've got to be sudo all right move it all right and there we go so if we do that now again we should have, oh, there we go test dot co so if we uh, reload apache now again it shouldn't give us that problem there we go it's worked immediately all right and we can go and look at the status again um, just to see what it tells us um, okay, that is from just now to determine that's all fine. Real okay, that's all fine. Um, that is from a previous error, so that's two minutes ago. So that, that's not the current problem. All right, so again now, okay, so if we do a curl, uh, okay, this is okay. The, the, this is now because we don't, not using a DNS, so we're not actually on the internet, okay. Um, we have to set up a host file so that it knows when we're referring to um, testsite.co that it must connect to our local IP address or wherever the IP address may be. Um, in other words, you know, uh, uh, okay, so, so sudo nano, um, etc. This you will not have to do on a server in a real world scenario. This is just for us to test, okay. So etc. and then hosts. Okay, and there we go. So what we've got to do is yeah, let's put in the entry uh, 192.168.0.110 and that will be uh, test site.co. All right. Uh, in fact, I think I did it the wrong way around now. I can't remember how this works now. I just did it, but I can't remember how it works. So let's just make sure 192.168.0.110. Somehow I've got a feeling it's the other way around, but you know, sometimes you, you forget silly things like how do you spell hat? <laughs> Is it a double T or a T? I can't remember. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's simple stuff that you know sometimes you just forget. Okay, so if I now try and do a call, all right, and uh, Okay, and we say test site.co. Okay. All right. He, and now I'm not sure if it's because the, the setup is incorrect or uh, interesting as NG. Okay, this this is connecting over the internet to someone else's site. So clearly it's the LM host file that's set up correctly or the host file that's set up incorrectly. Okay, so uh, uh, test site.co. Control trial and let's do it again. No, uh, request was not found on the server. Um, okay, but that is local now, so we are right. Okay, test site.co, server at test site.co is not found. Um, okay, so 
if we go look at our configuration file again um, over here oops sorry that's enabling it um, I want to nano it I want to edit it uh, there we go all right so document root is yeah okay so that's here all right control C control X and let's do a reload again just to make sure all right and let's do a curl uh, sorry there we go and there we have it okay we have now we're running a site locally okay and uh, it's lying in a folder called testsite.co and uh, oh, we've connected to it in fact um, I would imagine this should now work site dot all right um, okay so that didn't work um, so the rerouting of the site dot but but okay again that's not what the video is about but all right so at least test site that's here works all right so test site that's here works okay now the thing is we don't want to go to a, a actual folder and re and and, and uh, um, uh, not render what do you call it um, uh, uh, come on um, you know and, and display the website in the folder we actually want to connect to our proxy or to our server um, the one that we ran always with uh, uh, um, where were we uh, uh, node server.js we want to connect to that one okay so we need to connect to port 4000 when that thing is running okay so in order to do that so let's just edit the config file again um, okay the config file all right so this document root is telling it okay we want to go to that folder and and, and show whatever's inside there well we don't want to do that okay in this case anymore so we uh, comment that out with a hash all right and we put our proxy stuff on okay proxy preserve host on uh, proxy requests is off proxy pass and proxy pass reverse now that is the actual path over here um, to the actual uh, node server that's going to be that express server that's going to be running all right and uh, Okay, and, and we, we, we save that, but there is one little thing uh, uh, still. Um, the, um, the proxy modules for uh, Apache have not been installed yet. All right, so we can save that. All right, but things won't work. All right, so what we need to do is we need to go and steal this out here. Um, I think it's only the two that has to be done on a fresh install. Okay. Um, so uh, paste okay so we've got to do a to n mod a to enable module proxy okay and uh, it tells us we must do a restart of, but we are still not finished we need to do HTTP as well okay and then uh, if we do a restart uh, let's just say restart okay and that's not done now now if we try and connect okay we, we're going to get an error okay and the reason is is because the the node proxy uh, uh, express uh, server is not running so if we try and do a curl now all right it it's unavailable it tells us the service temporary unavailable or down due to maintenance or whatever the case may be. okay but all right so let's let's start that that server up again okay so uh if we go to um Let's say CD, uh, what is it, uh, var, uh, well, you don't have to, well, let's just say CD. Okay, CD var www dot, uh, test site, sorry, forge slash test site, okay. And then, uh, so it's, yeah, okay, test site, and uh, there, and there's our server.js. So if we say node server.js, now we can run it. But we want it to run in the background, so we put the, 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 the ampersand there, All right? So it'll now be running in the background, okay? And there we go, it says it's listening. Okay, so now if we do a curl again, um, I remember just a few moments ago, we got the server is temporarily unavailable, all right, up here. And now we're doing the same thing, but we've now started the node server and uh, the express end server. So, and we run that, and there is our site up and running, okay? And like I said, you can see there's AppRoot and a whole lot of things that are generated inside of AppRoot. So that means our site is running. Um, yeah, great. All right, so um, I guess what we can do is, all right, now the same thing would apply about setting up the um, uh, host file, okay? If I want to now browse to that site, okay, from my local machine, 
All right. Um, remember, um, testsite.ca doesn't exist anywhere. Okay, it's, it's just a local thing. So I need to set up localhost to actually point to the correct IP address. Like I say, in, in a real world scenario, on a real server, um, on the internet, you don't you don't have to do this step. This is just as a developer, you're doing your tests locally and stuff. But this is what you're going to have to do. All right. So uh, let's do that quickly. So um, it is uh, sudo slash etc slash hosts. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, what did I do now? Uh, sudo nano, my mistake, sudo nano. Okay, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit here so that everyone can see better. Uh, why do I always say that? Um, zoom in, zoom in. Okay, so uh, there it is. So it's, uh, what is it? Uh, 192.168.0.110. All right, and what we want it to be is test site.co. All right, and we save that and exit there. And let's just uh, not get rid of it. But why? Why, 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 why? What is happening that I can't minimize anymore suddenly? I disabled something there, but okay. So, all right. So, if we uh, take the same page and we say um, uh, test site.co, bam, there we are. All right. We're looking at the. Uh, Angular Universal app running on an Ubuntu server with Apache, and um, and there you go, you, you got it. It's up and running. Okay, so not, not, nothing really further to do. What I will say though is quite obviously, your um, this this little server of yours is running um, in the background on port four thousand. Okay, this node server JS. Okay, that that has to be started somehow, and. Um, I mean, for that, of course, you need to set up uh, um, a service for it and so forth. Um, what we can do, uh, sorry, my mistake there. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, just had to take a little bit of a break there for a second. Um, okay, so uh, what I was saying is, um, remember that your, 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 your Express engine, your server, that we're running on port 4000. Obviously, when you reboot the machine, for instance, or whatever the case may be, or um, that something's got to start that process up again. Um, you know, you can't do it manually by hand all the time because Apache's trying to connect to it, but it's not running. Something's got to start it. So I mean, we can we can run it as a service. Um, and just uh, just that uh, uh, untested, we'll we'll test it maybe while we're doing it. But I just got some code I just wrote down or a service I just a unit I just wrote down quickly not sure if it's going to work at all so this could be a, a good test for us so um, okay what you need to do is a sudo nano etc system uh, system d uh, system okay and then inside there we're going to create a service called let's say for instance uh, test site uh, dot service uh, service okay and uh, okay just log in there okay and I'll just paste the stuff that I've got here okay so all it's really doing is um, it's saying the description is test site dot co um, a couple of things uh, I, I have never I haven't tested this uh, after equals Apache T service that's what we're going to test now when we do a reboot um, but uh, okay, uh, as far as I know, if I say user equals Dean, it's going to run the, this process as Dean, um, which is what we want. You don't necessarily want everything to run as root or whatever the case may be. Um, and then the exec start, that is the full path, all right, to our node application, all right. And then the full path to our JS file that we're going to run. I suppose you could set working directory and it might pick up the server JS inside the working directory, but this is simple, it works as well. And if it dies, it'll restart it and so forth. All right, so um, control is that and uh, control X. Okay, now let's see, uh, we've got to enable it first. So it's sudo uh, system CTL enable um, test oops come on test Does it, there we go test site okay sudo enable test site let's see if he likes that okay he's done that 
All right, and then, uh, okay, we, we shouldn't have anything running at the moment. Okay, nothing's running in the background. So if we, let's see what happens if we say start. I, I haven't tested this, so this is a bit of a, a test for me as well. Okay, let's start it up and let's, I don't know, let's see if it does anything. Uh, well, may, maybe I've got to restart, but let's see if it actually did anything. Um, so let's do a curl and then we'll know. Ah, uh, it's not up. All right. Um, uh, in views directory browser, uh, this seems like a different error. This is a different error than we had just now. So this has got to do with the service, I think. But all right, what, what I want to do though is I want to restart the server and let's just see what happens. Well, I would imagine we're going to get the same error or it's going to work. I, I don't know. Uh, but obviously it's just a configuration problem. But okay, the basic thing that we wanted to do, uh, let me just do a restart here while, that's, uh, while I explain to you. Okay, so sudo reboot uh, now. All right, so let's do an immediate reboot. All right, let's shut the server down. If we come look at the server, it's shut down. It's going to be starting up again. Okay, it'll take a little moment. Let that run. Okay, so like I was saying, so the actual idea behind this video is to show you from the, the, the once you've got your Angular application, okay, how to install Angular Universal, then how to build the project for in an Angular Universal ready usable way. In other words, that's your disk folder with your server and browser subfolders and the server.js uh, file that it creates. Um, then I also showed you how to in the in the in the uh, server dot ts I think it is. Uh, let me just uh, go back here. Um, what was it? Uh, yes, in server dot ts we came here to the distribution folder and I, I changed it from or I changed it from dist browser to just browser. Okay, and that seemed to work for us immediately. Um, okay, so we did that as well and. Uh, Okay, and then we set up Apache, we installed Apache, we set it up, we can get to the site, um, all good. Um, and then due to the fact that, of course, if your, your computer reboots, your service must restart your your um, your server running on port 4000. That, like I showed you, you can do that with a, a service. Um, I just quickly type something in. I, it doesn't look like it's working. You can fiddle a bit more, but that, that's sort of a starting point there. Um, we'll just test it now when the server's booted up and just see maybe if there is a difference. Um, but that's all done. Now, now, okay. Now the other thing that I must mention is I did this on one of my own sites where, on which I use PHP as a backend, and everything worked fine. Okay, um, until I had to do, I could I could call PHP and so I would do gets on it. All right, but the first time I did a post. It tells me that you know the, the the address that it's trying to connect to the URL doesn't exist, okay. Uh, and then I found out that everything seems to work except the post. All right, so so I haven't really looked into it to try and solve that problem, but I'm just giving you a heads up. That's something you can look at. Um, you know why why can you do a get on PHP calls but not a post? Um, so yes, uh, okay. Let's see if I if I reconnect to the server. Um, oops. <sighs> trying to connect why won't you connect please don't tell me my IP address has changed okay now everything is still the same okay so I guess the first thing we can do is try a curl okay so this is the exact same error as before all right so it, it seems like it's trying to do something but the, the, the settings in our in our unit file is wrong um, let's just uh, do a status on it and just see if anything comes up uh, all right uh, function reader okay so uh, adapt it later uh, I actually want more info I wonder if we can do a syslog on this um, let's see that pseudo uh, tail I doubt it but hey who knows In, uh, 10 uh, bar uh, sorry, uh, no, it is var, uh, var log, come on, log, and then it is syslog. All right, uh, there we go. All right, so we've got something going here. Um, let's just make this a bit bigger. Okay, so it's definitely going to log something for us. Um, interesting. Okay, so a lot of things are still running in the background here. Okay, so, all right, what we can do 
is let's okay let's get onto the server for instance all right so let's just do a login so it's dean uh, and okay so yeah also let's just see what happens if we do a curl um just site dot c oh, my spelling uh okay so on this page here yeah, we should get a, a lot of output now um come on let's get back onto the server here and all right so there we got a whole lot of things all right cannot refresh snap call okay that's got nothing to do with it okay failed to look up view index in views directory browser okay all right that, that that's a different issue okay um i can maybe look at that later uh it's another video so but uh, I think for now, I mean, okay, so we've basically proven we can get it up and running. Um, everything is working, uh, just the starting virus service is not working. Um, I can't understand why. I mean, that should be a fairly simple thing. Fail to look up view index in views directory. Um, I wonder if that's got to do with that dist, but, hmm. Okay, let's just try something. I'm going to stop the service, okay. So, in other words, you're not running anything on port uh, 4000 anymore. And, uh, and I'm going to start it up again um, by actually by hand again, like we did previously. Come on. Uh, okay, so th this is the this is the one that I stuck into the, uh, the, the service, which didn't work. All right. So, okay, it says it's listening. But when we try to do something, we get that error immediately. Okay, that's interesting. So if I cancel that and then we do it. Um, so let's just change into that folder. CD. Okay, let's just go in there. All right, and then we say node server.js. Okay, and let's try now again. And there it works. Okay, so it's got something to do. I think it's got to do with maybe the working directory. Okay, um, I might still have that bit over here. Uh, exec start. There we go. Working directory. Let's just throw over the working directory and see if that makes a difference. So let's go and edit the uh, the service again. Um, service. Okay. And let's put in a working directory here. Yeah? Uh, all right, so it is, uh, let's just copy and paste it over so that we're sure it's no mistakes. Oh, come on. If this doesn't work, uh, I'll call it a day on that. Um, all right, so. Uh, So it's stopped. Uh, let's we make sure it's stopped. Yes. Uh, Documents change. Yes. So we got your system control daemon reload. All right. So we made a change to the uh, service system uh, CTL daemon reload. I think that's what they want. All right. Okay. And if we look at the status now. Okay. So it's stopping there. And if we do a start. I'd be amazed if this was the problem after all that. Um, okay, so it's running. There we go. So that was the problem. Okay, so okay, so let me just open that file again. Um, so it was the working folder, which was quite important. Uh, that's here. Okay, so it was uh, this line over here. All right. He didn't know where. Well, the working directory, like we all know what a working directory is. So that's the current folder in which it, it, it reads from and whatever the case may be and writes to and so forth. So, so that was that problem. Um, now, I assume that Apache uh, would have been checked, but we don't know because our reboot didn't restart the server. For, or it started, but it didn't work. Um, but let's just do it again. Let's make 100% sure. Um, so let's just do a reboot again. Uh, come on. Uh, there we go. A reboot. All right. So there the server shuts down. Okay, so ultimately, if we come to our browser again, okay, so it's HTTP colon uh, test, 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 where we don't have it yet. Okay, test site 
Co. Now this should not work because our server is currently down. Okay, and yes, it's sitting and thinking. It's trying to connect, trying to connect. It's not working. Okay, so our server is still in the process of booting up. Okay, so we'll wait until that's up. Takes a moment. I don't know why there seems to be this pause before this, uh, the the operating system gets loaded by visual uh, by uh, um, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh heck, man! Uh, VirtualBox. Um, th this has never happened to me before that there was this long delay before anything happens. I, I don't know what that's about. It's and it's also only on this one machine which I installed today. So something's up there. Um, so, but give it a moment. Um, okay, normally by now it's run, but okay, but once it goes, it goes. So takes a moment. Uh, okay, there we go. It's running. Okay, and. Uh, I guess by now we could already test and connect, but let's just let it boot up properly. Let's give it all the chance that it needs. Okay. Okay, network sorted. Okay, so it's waiting for a login. All right. So now, in theory, all right, if we if we go back here and we try again, we should get our website. There it is. Okay. So. We've set up, uh, um, so let, let to recap absolutely everything for our last time, and then we'll call it a day. Um, all right, so this video was about how to do, uh, how to use Angular Universal for uh, pre-rendering with a uh, Angular app, and uh, then to do the, how to build it, uh, how to test that on your local machine, then how to deploy that to a server, how to set up Apache, but, you know, Nginx, whatever the case may be, but in we, the example we used is Apache, how to set up the folders and stuff, what to get to it, how to set up Apache configuration file to uh, um, to, to, to access that, that website. Um, then the actual website is actually running from within uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, a different server. Um, and we, we started that app running on port 4000. We set up Apache to, when somebody hits Apache, to divert you as a proxy to that port 4000 and uh, return the results. And then uh, because of the fact the computer might need to be rebooted at some stage, obviously that server has to be started up again. We did that by doing a, um, a, 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 a normal service um, using system control or service, but system CTL. And I showed you how to write a unit uh, dependency on Apache. Um, I'm not sure if that works or not. I just, I guess that's the one that'll work. Apache two, uh, it seems to be fine. And uh, if it does die, it'll restart it. Um, well, it should. Um, I, I'm, I don't know how I can kill it. Uh, just in our tests, uh, I guess I could. Uh, well, I can kill the process and then it should restart and so on. But well, okay, I'll leave that to you. You can play with that. But it should restart it after a few seconds, and there you go. And uh, there we go, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, I appreciate you listening. And uh, I try to uh, do it as quick as I can. Um, maybe I did waffle a little bit as per usual. <laughs> but uh, hey, go ahead and enjoy yourself and have an excellent day. See you next time, guys. Goodbye.